Good morning ladies and gentlemen and everything in between. Today we are going to spend almost 5 hours on one of Europe's, maybe even on one of the world's cheapest airline. Let me present you the Flixbus of the skies, the Spirit Airlines of Europe, the Aldi of Aviation, the ex-communist version of Ryanair, I think you know what I'm getting at. Let me present to you Wizz Air. The Hungarian low-cost carrier was founded back in 2003 and has since risen to be the biggest budget airline in Central and Eastern Europe. With more than 200 planes, 40 bases in 21 countries and fares sometimes as low as 10 euros, it's fair to say that Wizz Air has completely torn the market apart. But I guess nowadays flying on Wizz Air is really part of the European identity. I mean, cheap beer, rude customer service and old men hitting on women that could be their daughters really is what 99% of this continent is all about. So I think I speak for many when I say that I have kind of a love-hate relationship with Wizz Air. Sure, in some parts they absolutely suck, but to be honest I would still rather pay 20 euros for a flight than 500. But now, let's see for ourselves. I'm the only passenger here in transit, just arrived in first Singapore Airlines business class. Check to see the other zone, but now I'm going to a new country. After arriving in Milano Malpensa on Singapore Airlines in business class, a 5 hour Wizz Air flight is the right thing to get me back on the ground. Mm, that's not the best choice of words here. And now I don't really know where to go, because there is no um, sign with flight information, there is no internet. Um, yeah, no idea, I'm fed up. The day starts with some minor warfare with the immigration officer at Malpensa. See, I arrived on a flight that goes from Barcelona to Malpensa. However, since the same flight later continues to Singapore, it arrives at the non Schengen area of Malpensa Airport, despite the first part of the flight uh, being operated between two Schengen countries, Spain and Italy. However, the immigration officer, who spoke like three words of English by the way, obviously didn't know that. He got quite upset, since he just couldn't comprehend how I made it to the non Schengen area of the airport by arriving from Barcelona. After getting quite loud and repeatedly telling me that I'm quote-unquote making a lie to him, I just agreed to that and said that I arrived from Singapore and lost my ticket. Not sure if he understood that, but when I tried to communicate in French instead of English, that was the final straw for him and he just waved me through. After a quick stop at the Priority Bus Lounge, it's time to head to the gate and to reveal today's destination. As a lover of tropical weather, cheap tobacco, tasty food and easy pronounceable names, obviously I chose Iceland as my destination of choice. Mm. But that's the beauty of Wizzair. They build affordable connections to random European places you would otherwise probably never go. And yes, Iceland is somehow still considered to be Europe despite being like 5 hours away from like actual Europe and with actual Europe I mean red wine Europe not pickled whale fin Europe but yeah Wizard connects Reykjavik with 8 destinations within 5 different countries and that oftentimes for less than 50 euros and what do you get for that in return well let's see for yourself Welcome on board this one and a half year old Visa Air Malta Airbus A321neo with the registration 9H WEC. Visa Air is investing heavily in new aircraft and this plane also makes a good impression. The A321neo allows Visa Air to fly to more distant destinations such as Reykjavik, Abu Dhabi or Amman without having to buy a wide body jet with high fuel burn. My seat looks new and clean and the same goes for the tray table. However, the legroom obviously isn't outstanding, especially for such a long flight, but what do you expect for those low fares? Cramped in a small seat on a flight that covers a distance of 3000 kilometers, that equals 
and absolute buffoonery. By the way, this seat allocation is random on Wizzair, and by that I mean that they will make sure that you will not sit next to your friends. As I don't have any friends, that is not really a problem for me, but if you're traveling with someone else, make sure to buy reserved seats in advance. Only if you like the person you're traveling with, of course. Surprisingly, today's flight leaves on time, which absolutely isn't always the case with Wizzair. Statistically, Wizzair flights used to leave its departure airport with an average delay of 46 minutes, but have oftentimes even experienced delays of a couple hours on Wizzair. However, they have improved a lot and they even managed to increase their on-time performance from around 60% to almost 3 out of 4 flights within the last year alone. And their completion rate, meaning the percentage of scheduled flights that actually take place, lies at 99.3%, which is higher than at even most full-service carriers. However, if nevertheless something goes wrong, it can be extremely frustrating to deal with it, as Wizard basically designs its processes to be as annoying as possible, so you will give up eventually. Speaking of annoying, after leaving the gate, some random dude just sits on the empty seat next to me and coughs and snorts all over the place. I feel kinda bad for him, as I know all too well how it feels to travel while being sick, but Man, this guy is just a walking petri dish and will be sharing his germs with me for the next five hours. Well, four and a half hours. I ask him to cover his mouth when coughing, but when he spits the thing that comes up from coughing on his handkerchief and then starts to play with it, my last meal almost comes back. And now with this beautiful image in your head, let's leave Milan behind us. Not gonna lie, flying so close to my home country without going there makes my heart cry a bit. Because what lies at the foot of those mountains is the south of Switzerland, called Ticino. And even though you might not associate palm trees, a mild climate and Mediterranean cuisine with Switzerland, Ticino is one of those places on earth that come as close to paradise as possible. One of the cities there is even called Paradiso. So the only thing that sucks is getting there and the ridiculous prices because even if it does not look like it, this is still Switzerland. But we are not here to get sentimental, but to see what Wizard has to offer. And well, if you're ready to spend a bit, it's quite a lot. The first thing I go for obviously is the two beer combo that come with free salted nuts. On board this flight they take cars and cash, but if I recall correctly it used to be only cards a couple of years ago. But that might have to do something with something that happened between 2019 and 2022. After taking off from Malpensa, we head towards the northwest and cross into French airspace. Today's flight will take about four and a half hours. Without Wi-Fi or an in-flight entertainment system, I resort to the kind of entertainment people do on the toilet when they forgot their phone. Reading package descriptions. By doing that, I discovered that the nuts of Wizzair contain a pretty unexpected ingredient, so maybe they want to change that. Other than that, I really enjoyed those two beers and the content I downloaded on my phone. The guy next to me fell asleep, and even though I would like to pay the lavatory visit after drinking the beers, I don't really want to wake him up and start coughing again, for the sake of both of us. So I decided to sleep as well, but the exact moment I closed my eyes, the sale of duty-free items started. They can be a bit aggressive in selling because I guess they get a commission, but to be fair they have some decent duty free prices. They don't sell cigarettes though, which might be a disappointment for some of you. What always stands out to me, and this flight was no exception, is the friendly crew. While I've had some less than great experiences with the ground crew and customer service staff, the flight attendants consistently make a positive impression. Despite the challenges of their job and occasionally dealing with difficult passengers, they always stay professional, helpful and respectful, in my experience. I've heard different stories, but from what I've seen on my new visa flights, I've never come across an unfriendly flight attendant.
the toilet was an interesting experience and I will just leave it without a comment. Back at my seat, I stared at this Illuminati thing for two hours. Illuminati, yes? No idea why it's there, but somehow every Airbus seems to have one. As always, I'm amazed by Wizz Air's huge route map. I mean, it's crazy to think that this budget airline that only operates planes from the A320 family flies to places like Iceland, Iraq, Oman, Kazakhstan, the Maldives, and even Birmingham. Who the f goes to Birmingham? Obviously, like almost all low cost carriers, they don't fly to Zurich, which sucks, but hey, they fly to other famous places like Ostin Masuri or Haugesund or Popratatri, and even to the cosmopolitan city of Bitkostsk. As I'm looking at the setting sun through the greasy window, the setting sun is probably looking at my greasy face, and I'm once again wondering why the hell I'm going to Iceland. Well, the answer is Play Airlines, a new Icelandic low-cost airline that I wanted to try. The video is already online, so feel free to check it out after watching this one. We leave mainland Europe behind us, and as we are flying through the dark over the Atlantic, to be honest, there is not much happening that could be of interest to you. So instead of boring you with the flight, here are some fun facts about Wizz Air. Fact 1. There is a website called www.wizzairsocks.com dedicated to how much Wizz Air socks. Fact 2. Wizz Air recently rejected a job application of a former BA pilot after the married man and father of two kids boasted about snorting cocaine off the breasts of a woman in South Africa. Fact 3. Wizz Air will soon launch flights to the US. By the way, one of those facts was wrong, and I'm not going to tell you which one it was. There was news about a volcano near the airport that will break out soon, so I was wondering if that happened or why the visibility was like from the window to the end of the wing. Probably the view during landing in Iceland is magnificent, but there isn't anything to see apart from some houses occasionally. I know that nowadays there is civilization in Iceland and I'm not sure if I was expecting Vikings uh, or elves riding on penguins, but somehow I'm still surprised to see a regular city from the view of my window. I know I sound like an American when I say that, but yeah, I really didn't know much about Iceland to be honest. There are some cities like Keflavik where the airport is located or the capital Reykjavik, but in the end Iceland is still very, very, very small, population wise at least. I mean, it is so small that people who are dating use an application to make sure that they are not related and the population of this whole country is as big as the one of Bidkostsk. But yeah, maybe that's precisely what makes the charm of this country, because after all, it's not all about size. The beautiful Icelandic weather consisted of fog, heavy rainfall, strong winds and pleasant temperatures of 1 degree. First I thought that there was a plane of Air Montenegro here in Iceland, which seems rather unusual, but I guess it's some other airline, but I didn't find out which one. Arrived in Reykjavik, there is no need to go through passport control since, despite not being part of the EU, Iceland is a Schengen member country, but I instantly realized that this country is not cheap and somehow works a bit different from most other places I have been. So I uh, made it to my hotel now, it's cold outside, um, even though I just walked for like um, 400 meters, it's the only hotel here right at the airport. Um, today's flight, uh, it was okay, um, I think I won't fly with air again on a flight that's 4 hours, but uh, I mean, the, the value you get for your price, the flight was like 45 um, euros, so um, for that it's, it's not too bad. My next flight was on Iceland's new low-cost carrier called Play Airlines. Click here to watch this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.